Hi guys, Dave the MMP, welcome to my channel. I'm currently standing in Yola, uh, Cal Built 230. Uh, it's the second version of California's 30 foot monohull. Um, this boat was built in 69. I'm going to do a lot of refits on this boat. Uh, it needs a lot of TLC. It's been sitting in the marina for about eight or ten years. Um, the previous owner took it all over the Pacific up to Alaska and then as far down as New Zealand and Australia. Uh, and then one little stint out to Hawaii and back. I'm currently in the Pacific Northwest, um, so subscribe. If you like the channel, hit the likes button when you see the videos and uh, stay tuned. All right, one of the things that I wanna get into is the uh, electrical system on this sailboat. Uh, when I first got the boat, the electrical system, the, the panel, uh, was just an alu straight aluminum panel with a bunch of fuses and some switches and that kind of fell apart on me on one of my trips out so I decided to change it and I went to these uh, Blue Sea systems where they've got eight breakers and eight switches per panel. Um, the electrical system kind of starts in the quarter berth here and there is uh, two battery switches down here, one for the house batteries and one for the start battery. I'm working on the house system right now, um, which is basically does everything except for starting the engine. On this side is the uh, AC side. So the AC comes in via my weatherproof connector out in the cockpit, and you get your main shore power connector. And all this boat has is a single branch circuit, just one outlet. So I'm gonna end up putting an AC panel in this side and get rid of that little uh, little outlet. I'll end up putting outlets all over the boat. So in order to get into the DC system, I'm gonna have to take away the stairs and the uh, bulkhead. Okay, let's get rid of the stairs here. And the stairs just unclipped from the bulkhead. And take the stairs away. And the bulkhead. Okay, most of the DC system is up here. We've got the start battery down here. We've got the negative bus in this plastic box. And the back side of the switches that I showed you that were in the quarter berth. So the back side of those switches is right up in here, right beside the engine. And there is a whole mess of wires in here, including the engine harness and all kinds of wiring. So I'm gonna have to get in here and take all of this apart, tie it all up properly and terminate it. I've built myself a little power panel here. And this is kind of built around a Blue Sea Safety Hub 150. And it's a waterproof DC system. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of fuses. And I've got some negative buses here. And I've also got the Victron Smart Shunt. So I'm gonna run Bluetooth. I currently have a Victron Energy, I think it's a 702, and that tells me what's happening with my batteries. And I can tell how much load I've got on the system. Um, but I think it's going to be much easier just to use my phone and use the uh, Smart Shunt, so all my negatives will get tied onto that. So this little board here I made with a cutting board. I just went to the dollar store and bought a big cutting board and cut the little handle part off of it on the right hand side and mounted my components. And that's gonna end up sitting right up in here on this wall. So I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff that's in the way here, right above the battery, mount that board right there. I'm gonna end up changing this battery. This battery is a flooded battery, which I don't like because when it charges, it produces uh, fumes in the boat. And now it's in the engine room and the engine room is vented, but I still don't like the fact that we've got uh, a flooded lead acid battery. And when the boat heals, the water in the battery is going to slosh over to one side or the other. Um, on this side, I've got my house battery, which is a lithium battery that I built with cells and a BMS. And it's in this indestructible case that's strapped down. So no issue with that. Lithium doesn't off gas. And I've got another lithium battery in the sole of the uh, boat. 
All right. All right, the other lithium battery is in the, uh, the floor, which goes into the bilge keel, and it's 140 amp lithium. So those wires run up from the bilge and come up into the engine room, which they come up here out of the bilge, and then they wrap around and connect up into here and go up into my power panel. All right. Just gonna get this battery out of here. Engine room corrosion, especially on batteries. This little wing nuts tighter than what I can get off with my hands. All right. Now, I noticed there's a feed right here. For some reason, somebody's tied a direct feed right onto the battery. I've traced it. It goes to the autopilot. And for some reason, oh, that's interesting. It doesn't even have a lug on it. Wow. Okay, I'm just gonna clip that off just so that it doesn't touch anything. It should have a lug on it. All right. That takes care of the positive. I'm gonna tie that little autopilot wire up just so I know where it's at. All right. Positives off. Battery switch is turned off so I don't have to worry about shorting anything else out. Now, the other thing I noticed is they're using the start battery negative as the main negative bus. So, this is the negative that's coming over from the engine and it's tied on to this big battery that's coming out of the uh, the keel sole where my lithium is. And I don't know why they did that. So I'm gonna have to tie these two together once I get the battery out of here so I can get still run my house connections once I've got the start battery out. All right, looks like I've got everything out of here now. See if I can lift this battery out. Size 27 marine battery, wet lead acid. It's not very light. Okay. I prepared a little bolt and I'm going to just tie these negatives together. So if I want to use the house battery, it will still be connected while the start battery is out of here. So I'm just going to bolt this together as if it was tied onto the battery. So what that does is it allows both of my house batteries to be tied together while this battery is out. And I'm going to have to change that because I don't like uh, having that tied through the start battery connection. It doesn't make sense. And then the whole negative bus system was tied off of this negative. Which also doesn't make sense. And I don't like the way they tied that on either. It should be a crimp lug. It should be a copper crimp lug tied on there. All right. All right, I've got the battery out of the battery tray now. I just kind of tied off those negative wires that were all tied together on the battery. And took the cover off this little scepter box, which is got a little bit of a terminal strip in there, which all the negative commons are going into this little box. And I'm going to eliminate this box and I'm going to put my power panel here, which is this little power panel that I built with all the negative bus bars. And that's going to go over in here, right behind the start battery. The start battery that I'm going to put in here is going to be a much smaller battery. We've only got a little 20 horsepower diesel here. It doesn't take very much power to start this thing. And the other thing too is I can use the lithium and put two batteries together. 
uh, with the start battery. So if the start battery ever becomes low, um, you can put both of my battery switches on both and that'll get the lithium to help uh, the start battery. You can just common them up together for about five minutes. That'll boost the power into the start battery and then uh, use the st start battery to start the motor. Okay, I'm gonna work on getting all these negatives out of all here. All right, so I got that negative bus bar out of there. That's what was inside that box. Here's all my negative wires. It's a bunch of negative wires down here. And this was the main wire that went into this box that was providing the negative common. Um, looks like a couple of number 16 or number 14 wires. Not nearly big enough to supply the whole negative power system for the boat. Now my dilemma now is I still want to use the lights in the boat just so I've got some light because in the Pacific Northwest at about 4 p.m. it gets dark. So I'd really like to find out which one of these wires is my cabin lights. So I need to turn on my main cabin light and I've put a little jumper on the main negative bus and I'm just going to start going around checking to see which one is the main cabin lights. I've got my lights on in the boat and I'll just keep checking it until I find the one that makes my cabin lights work. They're all LED, so they're really low power consumption. Not too worried about getting a big spark. There it is. So now I got main cabin lights. I'll just put that jumper on there. Now my main cabin light's working. All right. Okay. Now I can get to work on putting my... I'm going to have to do some work rerouting all of these wires. Uh, my board's not going to fit in there with those wires crossing that area. I can see there's a bunch of uh, AYBC boat covered. It kind of looks like Lumex, these white wires down here. They go all the way down to the aft area in the boat. So I'm going to have to uh, cut those tie wraps that are holding them there and reroute them so I can clear out this area where I'm going to put my power board.